born and raised a little suburb north here, north of here called uh, Aldi. Uh -huh. um, so I graduated from MacArthur High School. Um, right out of high school, I didn't know, you know, what I wanted to do, right? So um, I, I kind of knew I didn't want to do four years of college. So I went to UTI, um, did pretty good there. I had a, um, you know, I was a, uh, I, I would say an average student. Um, not a great one, but I was able to go in there, focus and um, graduate. After graduation was tough, I should say. I was 18 years old, uh, about to be 19. Mm -hmm. It was hard to get a, uh, it was hard to get anybody to take a chance on me because I was so young, right? right. Um, nobody wanted to give an 18 year old kid um you know a, a service van full of tools and have him go out and mm -hmm. you know work out in the field right so i struggled a little bit you know but i learned you know i, I learned it, it, it was challenging at first but i learned and i got my big break at the airport finally so i started working at the uh, at bush intercontinental um as an hvac technician and that's where i really polished my skills um you know i, I really got good at it you know i evolved into one of the better technicians there mm -hmm. um and i, I like the field i like the airport um but I decided it was time to move on from there. So I got a job with one of the bigger contractors here in, in Houston, Way, the Way, I think they're called Way Service, now Way Companies. Uh, so I did HVAC, you know, the whole time. And then the um, a couple of years later, the position at NRG Park opened up. Uh, at NRG Park, um, I evolved from being an HVAC technician to being more of, a, of an MEP, you know, mechanical electrical plumbing. So I learned a lot of different trades there. Um, you know, eventually after about three years there, I was promoted into management. So I got my, uh, I became the lead, the lead MEP. Um, and then eventually the manager as well. Um, so I worked at NRG for seven years. Great experience. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about show business. You know, you get to a point where, you know, especially at a place like NRG Park where you, um, you know, you work a lot of events. Right. I mean, you're never home. You know, you're working, I would say, 300 days out of the year. Um, every weekend is shot. You know, you, you don't have a chance to make plans, right? That's just the life. That's right. just how life is there. Um, so, so you know what, I need to leave the field. I need to take a break. You know, I want to do something else. So that's when I, I got into more of a be, being a facilities manager. Um, I got it. I went back to my alma mater, UTI. Uh -huh. um, there was a uh, an opening for the facilities director, and I I was chosen to to do the job. Right. Oh, cool. So uh, I went there as a facilities manager, as facilities director, and that's where I honed in more on, on the facilities aspect of things. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I learned about security. I learned about housekeeping. Um, I learned how to really, you know, get into the finance part of it, the budgets and, and you know, managing ma more, more of a day to day maintenance as well. Um, so I was there for a year, but I was, you know what I, I said, you know, I, I, I really like the sports world. I'd like to get back into it. Right. And it just so happened the engineering manager job came open here. Um, so again, I was, I came over here. I was hired to be the engineering manager in 2014. Um, and I had, uh, of course, all that experience helped me out. Then in 2017, I was promoted to director of operations and that's the position I hold now. So director of operations and engineering. So now I oversee, um, you know, basically the logistics of the stadium, um, housekeeping, uh, day, you know, day-to-day -day maintenance, engineering and events and, and, um, and setups. for me is you know you come in in the morning you, you you always check the news you know news of the day you want to know what's going on around the city you want to know what's going on around the, and around the globe even you know what's going on at different stadiums um you know i walk the building a lot i mean it's 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 only a 22,000 seat stadium i get it but there's something different that always pops up so i walk the building a lot you know i look for you know any any type of deficiencies um i do quality control myself or my guys do it as well so we all of us walk the building a lot right you're communicating with your peers, right? You know, there's a lot of moving parts here. So somebody may be working on an activation that they need your help on, right? We have big projects going on. Hey, we need, you know, we need to know how we're gonna make this happen. Um, you know, we're, we go to different meetings. You know, we have a director's meeting and we have an executive meeting. So we're constantly communicating what we're doing. Um, on a game day, it's a little bit different. Um, I probably show up maybe six to eight hours before gates. Um, just to make sure we've got everything set. So everything should be set on a game day. By the time I show up, we should have, we should be set. We should be just maybe wrapping up little things here and there. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're meeting with people. We're making sure that they have what they need. If anything new pops up, we're taking care of it. Um, and now we're just on standby, right? right. Cause your client comes in, you know, maybe he forgot, he or she forgot to tell you that, you know, they need a power for something they're going to do at the activation, right? Now you got to make that happen. So we're standing by making sure that, you know, that if anything like that comes up, we're able to accommodate and get that done. Um, you know, at about two hours before gates, we have a security meeting. 
Um, so we meet, we talk about the different activations. We talk about if there's any threats. Um, you know, most of our threats consist of, you know, when, when supporters for other team comes, right. not really threats, right? But something to be concerned about. Security issues. Security issues, okay. things like that. Um, so we're watching out for that. We discuss it. Um, again, we that meeting's about 30 minutes long. Then we go, we walk the building again. Um, you know, we look over the uh, food and beverage operation as well, um, making sure that we're ready to go, making sure that everybody's starting to get ready for gates, making sure everything's clean. Um, housekeeping is big, right? Um, so we go after it like that. Um, then you have gates. You know, we open the building, we get start getting everybody in, monitor the lines. Um, obviously, we don't want to we don't want our lines to be all the way out to the metro rail, right? So uh, we're monitoring, making sure people, you know, none of the uh, none of your metal detectors, your magnetometers, are, are are making sure they're all working, making sure we get we got a good flow of people in. And if there's problems, we you know we address it, whether that's sending people to other gates or you know ha- you know getting in there and, and getting people in as well, scanning tickets. So um, we get them all in, and you know the game happens, and we're still walking. Keyword is walking. We walk a lot here. Um, you know, keyword is walking, you know, we're making sure that, you know, you, you got to watch out for fights. You got to watch out for things like that. You know, we have a command post that we set up and all the calls get filtered through them. Um, you know, we may have, you know, a typical main, the maintenance guys may have a, either a typical call is maybe a, um, I don't know, a toilet will continue to flush or a urine or a sink, something like that. Right. Your operations guys walking around, picking up tables after activations, you don't want to leave tables out. Um, you know, things like that, man, making sure TVs are on, uh, making sure everything, making sure everybody's having a great time. If everything went right, which thankfully it, it, it almost always does, you know, we have a great operation here. Um, just a feeling of accomplishment. Everybody just breathes, you know, we all get together, we just breathe. Um, Cause it's a lot of responsibility. You have 22,000 fans in here um, and, and you have a little group that's responsible for their safety and their guest experience and making sure they have a good time. Um, it's, it's, it can be very stressful, you know, um, but after that, everybody just breathes a sigh of relief. We all take our job very seriously. Um, we all love what we do. Um, and we're all really good at it. You know, the people I work with, my coworkers are, are the best at what they do. Um, so we just breathe, you know, we're, we, we, we breathe, we have that sense of accomplishment. We're happy, you know, we get to do it again right we get to do it again sometimes we're looking to the next one already right so we get done with that and you know it's 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 a really good feeling there's no other feeling um like game day when everybody's doing their thing when the stadium is clean when the music is playing it's, there's just an electricity that that just goes through you man and and you think about it and you're like man i had a part in this and it's just no i can't i can't describe the feeling it's just a great feeling We're unique in itself, right? That we're we're soccer, right? Um, soccer's not, you know, that big yet in our in our country, right? It's growing at a rapid pace, and just being a part of that, um, just being a part of the changes that are happening, uh, being a part of, you know, the things we do, the the upgrades that we're doing, how we try to upgrade, constantly upgrade our guest experience. Being a part of that is always special for me, right? Um, you know, I've worked in the seventy thousand seat stadiums before. Um, this is just intimate, right? There's not a bad seat in the house. Um, you know, we're constantly looking to improve it. Um, and I just, I feel like it's mine, right? This is my house. Um, and that's what I love about it. And then meeting a team um, of people that want to grow as well. You know, I tell my guys all the time, you know, you you, you should want to be me, right? I, I don't, you know, you should want to be, you should want to sit in this office, right? Just like wanna, I want to sit in the general manager's office, right? So growing that team as well, developing it um, and seeing what they're becoming is very special as well. So there's been a lot, right? But I think on a personal level, I think um, when I was promoted from engineering manager to director of operations, um, it was a difficult transition for me, right? Going from engineering manager to now the director of operations, which you're basically, you're you're trying to be a facility manager, right? So going from engineering manager where I was focused solely on equipment, you know, on on preventive maintenance, on just the nuts and bolts of, of, of things. And then going from that to more of a facility management role, was 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 difficult right was was challenging for me and i remember having a conversation with my boss and he told me he said you know edgar i've noticed that about you know engineering guys right when they go from here they're good at what they do but then when they go from here to there it's a difficult transition to go from looking at the overall picture right how everything um how everything integrates right so 
that's when I was always, I was, I had been a member of IFMA for a long time. And I said, you know what? I really need to look at the, at the CFM, at, at the knowledge base that I have there. So I went to, I went to two courses, um, you know, over, I think it was two years. And I just studied the books and I learned different, you know, the different aspects that, the different elements that IFMA brings, right? That, that they do outside of sports, right? And, um, you know, I, I, I studied hard. Um, and then I went for my certified facility manager exam, I, which I recently passed. So um, that's kind of how I solved it, right? And that's been the biggest, one of the most challenging parts of, of making that transition from engineer and manager to director of ops, that promotion right there, that transition. You know, we go back to, you know, the customer service part of things, right? Sometimes you, you, you cannot please everybody, right? You try your best, but that's always the case, right? There's some always somebody that's going to be mad at you because something didn't happen in a timely manner or you forgot about something or just slipped off your radar. Uh, that's a, I think that's a common challenge for all of us, you know, not just in sports, not just in venues, but I think every, if you ask every FM, FM out there, they're going to tell you, right? You know, it's hard to you know, go out there and really, you know, please everybody as much as you can try. You know, somebody's always not going to like the way you did something or or why you're doing it right or why, you, you know, somebody's always going to have an issue with you and it's the way you handle that that makes a difference. You know, learn as much as you can. Um, the same advice that was given to me as a long time ago is you can learn, you can learn something from everybody. So don't discount anybody right you know just because someone is sweeping doesn't mean you cannot learn from them right i mean you can learn a lot you, you you're going to be over housekeeping right find out what that person knows right you know get in the middle of things right don't just take people's word for it you know learn it you know be hands-on you know uh, find out what your people are going through right because your people like, like we say right they're, they're very important right um so get involved with what they're doing um learn it and like i said be be open-minded about things right don't you know, don't don't be closed off to, to people, right? Um, I, I go back to it. You can learn something from everybody. You know, take advantage of that. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, even when I was at UTI, when I left the field, I, I really enjoyed it, right? Um, it's, it's a challenge every day, right? You're part of something bigger than yourself. Um, you know, you make things happen. People come to you to solve problems, you know? And if you're lucky enough and blessed to build a good team, it just makes it very enjoyable, right? You don't you don't come to work every day. You know, you, you go, you know, place with a bunch of your friends and you make things happen. You know, that's what I love about it. That's why I've stayed in it for so long. I would rather do nothing else, right? You know, I told I mentioned about my, my HVAC beginnings, right? Um, that helped me, you know, get into that, understand the nuts and bolts of it. And then I was able to get into the more of a facility management aspect of it, right? But I mean, I don't feel like I work every day. You know, I, I, like I said, I feel like I come to a place, like school, right? You come to a place um, with all you, where all your friends are at and you make things happen. You know, that, so it, it doesn't feel like work. It's not a job, you know, it's a place where I come, a bunch of my friends are here and we make things happen, right? Um, knowing that we can create anything, knowing that we can overcome every challenge because we have, um, you know, it's just great. You know, it's just, it's just a wonderful feeling to come in and, and be able to accomplish that. Hi, I'm Edgar Moctezuma, CFM, and this is my facility. <laughs>